I'm talking about the source, the course, and the force of that river. And if we have a look at it, it's the river of grace throw, coming from the throne room of God. And it talks about the progression, I believe, of the Christian experience as well. See, Ezekiel had a vision here, and he had a, a, a person, an angel, leading him through. And I really believe it represents the grace of God that God puts upon our life, the love, the redemption, and the healing of God and the Holy Spirit. And if we had a river like this that we knew that there was a river that we could get into the deeper things of God, I think we'd all rush to that river. We'd find where it was and go, whoa, I want to dip today. you know. And so God's talking about this, that it's available. And what the sermon's really about today is about you know, what the Lord wants us to do, each of us, for him and towards him. And that is that we need to leave our shore of stagnant lifestyle, the shore where there's disappointment, and there may be a disappointment in our Christian experience, and we're just waiting around where God wants us to leave that and go into the deeper things of him. He really wants us to get over our heads. So the first thing we see there is that the water's to the ankle, and that's verse 3. And I believe the water's to the ankle is really speaking about you know, the new Christian experience. For the river isn't any good for a start unless you get into the river. It can be there, but unless you decide to get into the river, it's not going to do any good for you. You're not even going to get wet. You can look at it and you can watch other people get in. And Ezekiel was led by the messenger, we see in verse uh, 2. And if we obey the leading of the Holy Spirit of God, I believe that he will take us into a deeper walk with him and a deep revelation of him. And we'll experience things in our Christian walk that maybe we haven't experienced before. And I, I really believe the water to the ankles there is an introduction to Christianity. You see, there was only a little bit of the man in the water, which is in the things of God. But there was more a man outside of the water. And as you grow as a Christian, you become a Christian, there's so much you don't know about the things of God, but you've had a touch from God or you've met the Lord. And it's only a small part of your life, but man is still the largest part of the life. You know what I'm trying to say? And I think it's something like, you know, wading through shallow water like kids wading through mud puddles. And I think as he led him through, he said that he led him through and he didn't stay at that place very long. And what happens is there's a lot of, even Paul talks about a lot of carnal Christians that stay at a certain level in God and then we don't continue to grow. So we need to continue to grow. And I know this is a rock and science and a lot of you do it, but you may just need today to hear that a little bit more, that you may not be happy with where you are, but to go deeper in the things of God. The great properties of the water didn't have any effect on the man of God. As a man walks through, here's the water. So he walked through on ankle deep. The water didn't affect him too much. You ever walk through water ankle deep? You can walk through and have a good time. The water doesn't really affect you. You can still walk your way. You can do whatever you want to do. Kick the water out the way. And you can have your own way. But he says, let's not stay there. Let's go a little deeper. So he went further down to the knees in verse 4. And after measuring off about a third of the mile, increased the depths to the knees. And I believe the knees talk about there is the next growth is about our prayer life. And as Christians, as we grow, it becomes a part of our everyday life. And remember that the, the river flowed from the altar of God. And that's a place of worship. And it's also a place that we, this is a place that we grow more in our Christianity. We need to go further in the things of God. Even Jesus in Matthew 26, he says he went further away from them. And he separated from them so he could get in the presence of God at, um, in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, not my will, but your will. It was when he separated and he went further in the depth of the experience of togetherness with God, he could find the will of God and he could find the strength and go deeper in, in uh, the Lord's will and have strength in what he has to do. So the water's already having a greater effect on the walk of the man of God, but it was more difficult to jump around and, and be like that. So if you hear this is the water, then you get into this part, next part down about the knees... It's a little bit harder to, to walk when you're pushing through the water, does it not? And so the water's having a, a larger effect on the man of God because it's up to his knees. And it's a little bit harder to wander 
and to do the things that you want to do as it is up here. But the, the angel says, I'm not happy there, let's go further. Then he takes him on in verse 4, another third of a mile, and it says it's covering about, about his waist. About half of the man of God, which is the, you know, the man, is covered, and half is out. So now we've come from the, here, where, where the man is more, God is less, to here, to here. This is our walk. And the more that we sort of get into the deep things of God, the more less of us and the more of God. And so you know now that if you get into the section of your waist, it's even harder to wander around. It's harder to push through. You ever tried running with waist deeper water? It's good for exercise, but it's slow, yeah? And God wants to take us into that way, that we can grow more and we can go more in him. Now, this time I believe that uh, Ezekiel was giving in to the power of the water. When you get up to here, the water starts knocking you around. You ever been in a wave down the beach and you're up around this thing and the water's knocking you around and moving you around because there's not so much of you sticking out. And when the Holy Spirit really gets a real touch of us and we say, God, you know, take me for a swim. Take all of me, even as, as, as Peter says, you know, don't just bap, you know, wash my feet, wash every part of me. When he does that, well, then what happens is that we're more controlled by him and his forces and his waves rather than us. And then in verse 5, he says that there's the waters are there to swim in. So deep you couldn't walk in, you had to swim. So now I really believe that Ezekiel is over his head. He's been over the head. You be over the head in the world, you can be over the head in God. And it's better to be over your head in God. The only way that you can survive is swimming in him. And let him guide you and help you through. So now you see Ezekiel had to swim. And it takes faith to swim. It takes, it takes your energy as well. It didn't occur just by the man, but the man had to give in to the water as well. They both work together. When you're swimming, you're giving it the water, plus you're doing your work. And as you're doing it and you're in harmony, who knows when you're in harmony when you're swimming, you swim faster, you swim better and longer. It's those who fight when they're trying to swim and they can't and they're worried or they're panicking or they have fear that they're going to drown, that really you, you, you're not giving in to the flow and moving with it. If you have a, a tight, you know, like a current coming with you, the worst thing you do is go against the current. I experienced that. I, I could not swim. You know? I was, couldn't believe it. I was only from there to the shore and I just couldn't get there until I gave in and I went with it and around, I was fine. And we have to be the same. We need to get into the water with the things of the Lord and, and move through. There's a balance that we need to put in our life. And I believe too many Christians resolve to just sitting on the bank and watching other people do the swimming. It's good that you're up to your knees. It's good that you're over your head. But where is your life? We can't live on other people's experiences or the other anointings or the other things that are going around the world or what other people are experiencing. You can, you can long in your heart to say, God, I want to be in that river. I want to be that deep. I want to go in those places with you. I seek those things. But, but listen, you know, don't live in their experience. You know what I'm trying to say here? You've got to live in yours. You've got to be real with where you are and continue to move on into the deeper things of God. And God's asking that even today, that we need to be people that I ask you, where are you in your walk? Oh, well, sometimes it's at my ankles and sometimes at my knees. And then sometimes it's up to my waist and sometimes I'm swimming. And then I'll get in and out and I move around the shallows and depths. Should we be like that? Should we just continue to, to, to swim in the goodness of God? I believe that the car carnal Christians, those who, who live in a way that's out of the spirit, is that we, our life is like this. We're into the depth, we're into the shallows all the time. And things are going well, next minute you get hammered and you're back to your ankles again. And you're doing it your own way. And when we have that instability in our life, we really don't grow as strong and as fast as we should. And the funny thing is, people say, well, how can I move forward when I have this force of water against me? But it's learning to swim is the important thing. You learn to swim and you learn to yield 
with the water and the things of God, God will move you faster than you've ever been before. You hear me? And it's what we need to do as a church, as, an, as a group of church, but also as individuals. And as we do individually, because revival begins with you, not with an out, great outpouring, it happens. But I don't know if God's moving that way at present. I just believe it's starting within people's lives and fires start. And then as it happens, it becomes your ethos and your character and your things, the culture and stuff. And God's just moving. The next minute you look back and you say, we are in revival. And we didn't even realize. You got what I'm trying to say? There'll be outpourings and there'll be great things. Fine. But we can't hang on to that. We've got to hang on to now with us. And as we do it together, we will move forward. John Maxwell says there's only two types of people that come to growth. Those who are growing and those who are resisting growth. Too many people I see as Christians, they've been walking with the Lord for a while and they get happy with their Christianity or they think they've worked it out and then they become cynical and say, well, that might be good for you, but I know better and this is where I am. Well, I don't believe we should ever, ever, ever stop to grow in the things of God and to understand the depth of him. And when you say you're happy with where you are and just enjoy, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're happy. You're happy as you go. But you know what I mean? You've got to have this hunger deep within to go more with the things of God. If that's not happening, you've got to say, well, where's your spirit? Is your spirit alive? Is it quickening? Are you feeding it? Or, or are you just content? And I just want to get over the line or I'm, I'm happy now. We don't make it until we see him in heaven. So I'm asking you today, where is your experience in God? What is the depth that you're experiencing today? Too many people stop at the shortfall of your potential. Your potential isn't at your ankles. That's the baby's potential. Your potential is to go for a swim and then get out of the water and experience the growth and the life and also the water, remember, flows down to where there was dead sea, salty, everything dead that would bring life into the salt. The freshness will bring life into your deadness. There will be life. And then it says the fishermen will feed off the fish. That means people will feed off the goodness that's happening in you. People will see and they will cast a net. They will want what's in you. They will want to feed from what's in you. You see, God wants to take you to the place that people will, will see that and feed and there will be life around you and and he wants to take the dead out of you. You know what I'm trying to say? That's what it's about. There's a saying that says, if, you did yes, if, if what you did yesterday still looks big to you, then you haven't done much today. How big is today for you? I'm wondering today if you would choose to go deeper with him. If you would leave this place and say, God... Uh, I'm not going to be happy with um, my hunger level for you because I believe it can always grow more. Happy as you go, but pressing in for more. You can choose to face your fear or you can lose control by placing in him, by the immersing in the river, and the depth of the Holy Spirit. Walk in your own way. Experience the unknown. Don't go the one third down the track to see if it is deeper or whatever it is. Or you can paddle in the small parts and stay safe. And never really experience what he has for you further in your Christian walk. I've written here, there's security, rest and safety in Jesus Christ. There's hope, purpose and fulfillment in Jesus Christ. And there's a challenge, but there's victory in Jesus Christ. And we must begin with a deep, deeper relationship with him through a personal walk with the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said, I will send another of the like kind to help you. Isn't that awesome?